What's going on everybody? It's your boy C4 here, and I hope you guys enjoyed my fancy starts and sits video that came out earlier in the day. But today, you know, to continue with, you know, the, the unbelievable uh, amount of content that you're getting here on Beast Mode TV, I decided to make an Eagles video in between, um, you know, some of these top 10 videos. And tomorrow there may be a rebuild. The second official rebuild on the channel may be coming your way Thursday. I'm not exactly sure if it will be Thursday or not. But... That being said, we're doing another episode of Eagles 5th Down, and I'm trying to relate it to the defeat against the Washington Redskins, trying to keep it relevant. You know, I've been doing, you know, broader picks like potential draft picks, potential free agents, but let's bring it back down to earth and in the now. And today, in episode 7 of the 5th Down, this is, the the subheading would be how to survive the Lane Johnson suspension, now knowing what we know with Big V at tackle. But the biggest thing is you look at any Eagles fan page, you look at any Eagles blogs, you look at the comment section in any of the Eagles um, videos that they post to their official Facebook page or even on their official website. Everyone says, when are the Eagles going to trade for Joe Thomas? Are we going to get Joe Thomas? Heard he's on the block with the Browns. Are we going to trade for Joe Thomas? So the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer right now because that will be the title of this video because that is the, the in thing to talk about is when is Howie. Big balls Howie got to come up with some incredible trade to land Hall of Famer, all pro tackle Joe Thomas from the Cleveland Browns. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is not in any shape or form even probably been thought of in the Eagles front office. That is it's it's almost I almost don't want to talk about it because I want to act like like what Eagle fan would think that this trade would actually happen or we have let alone this ha trade would actually happen but why would we want this trade as well as do you know anything about Joe Thomas as well as what possible ammunition do we have to land a guy like Joe Thomas so that is we'll leave that I'll talk to a couple other points and then we'll we'll finish up with the meat and potatoes which is Joe Thomas so number one is you know. Big V is going to get Carson Wentz killed. There's no other way to put it. You're going against Ryan Kerrigan. He's not the, the best pass rusher, but he's a very good pass rusher in the NFL. And he, Big V got absolutely embarrassed. I've never seen an offensive lineman on this Eagles team be that overwhelmed since Danny Watkins at guard. And that is, you know, that's very, very difficult to compare a guard to a tackle. A tackle, most times tackles, um... They're veterans. They have some some experience. They have enough so that they can do things that rookies won't be able to do, and more so being able to cover their weaknesses. If you're a shitty right tackle, at the very least, you know you can be dirty and make a couple dirty plays. You know how to get away with some of the some of the things that give you a slight advantage at the tackle spot. When you have a rookie guy, a rookie, these guys from you know Hal Vitae, he's a monster. Coming from TCU, more often than not, he was just straight up bigger than his defenders, and he can use his size. Um, to to be effective at TCU. But like I said in an earlier video, man, Hal Vitae, you cannot look at any of his scouting profiles and not see the word project. He is not ready. We had fucking 10 goddamn weeks knowing that Lane Johnson was going to be suspended. And Vitae, what we saw against the Washington Redskins was our best answer. Not moving Allen Barbary to right tackle and having uh, Steven Wisniewski or our highest draft pick, Isaac Sumalo, move to guard. That was not the best option because what we saw with, with Vitae was deemed the best option that really makes me question Doug Peterson's evaluation sure Vitae is a big mauler and you know might be all right in the run he wasn't even good in the run game you would figure a guy that big at the very least he can get in the fucking way and eat up a couple blockers on a run but I wasn't seeing any of that man everything from that right hand side of the line is not good it's going to get our young rookie franchise quarterback Killed. That is what's going to happen. I'm almost borderline saying, fuck it. Throw in Chase Daniel there until the goddamn Lane Johnson suspension happens if you want to continue to have Vitae play at right tackle. Uh, another one, Big V needs help at the very least. If you decide what it looks like going into Minnesota, uh, unless something really changes. I'm recording this on Monday, so it's a it's, it's lost Monday, so everything's kind of down. But Doug Peterson just had a press conference, and it sounds like they're going to roll Vitae at right tackle against the number one defense in the league. Against probably, who's going to be matched up against? Everson Griffin, one, a very good D-line. Just anyone on that D-line will be able to overmatch Vitae. They're just going to attack that right side of the line. So assuming... Vita is staying. At the very least, he needs help. He needs help from either Ertz or Selleck, assuming they're only going to probably want to run tight end if you're going to straight up uh, help the help the tackle. That's taking Ertz, specifically, one of our best receivers, just out of the offensive game plan because you need to take 
a player. We can, we don't have a good enough offense that we can just, you know, oh, yeah, we'll just fucking take this guy, have him help run block, have him help chip it inside because we don't. We don't have the luxury. We don't have the outside wide receivers that can make enough plays. We need Ertz out there catching passes, moving the chains. Uh, so whether it be Ertz, Selleck, or a running back, running backs as well in this offense, this Andy Reid-like Kansas City offense, running backs are almost always an option in the passing game. We almost always have Sproles, Matthews, Wendell Smallwood, Kenyon Barner, whoever it is, when they have a play, even if they're not running the ball, very often are they run blocking. They are usually one of the, they're the check down. This is the check down based running back offense that we have. Running backs always need to be available on the checkdowns. And because of Vitae, if we have no tight ends in or we have a design pass to Zach Ertz, our running backs need to run block. That is one less option for Carson Wentz. And that is, you do not want it with a rookie quarterback, especially this week against the Minnesota Vikings, to be limited in his options on moving the ball. Because he's going to have to fucking get rid of that ball very, very quickly and very, very safely because they are one of the best defenses right now. I think they're the number one scoring defense in the league. They are forcing turnovers at will. And if we you know, limit our offense, an already somewhat limited offense, we're going to be in for a big, big fucking ass whooping this weekend uh, when Minnesota comes to town to the link. Um, so, like I said, obviously I personally feel like you should just move Barbie to right tackle and have Wisniewski go to guard. At the very least, you have an experienced offensive line. Wisniewski has graded up very well to pro football focus. Barbie has been one of our best offensive linemen this year, so why not roll with the momentum high and put him at tackle? But people still want to talk about Joe Thomas. They're like, well, I mean, the Browns said everyone outside of Terrell Pryor is up for trade. Why don't we trade for Joe Thomas, the all pro, perennial all pro. I don't think he's made the. I don't think he's not made the Pro Bowl every year, but I mean, it's it's the Pro Bowl. It's fan voting, whatever it is. But he's still very, very good. Why aren't we trading for him? Why are we trading for a franchise left tackle? Because he's a left tackle. We are not going to give. It's still going to be very expensive. What is he? 30, 31? So he's near the end of his career. Signing him, let alone we're a team in the rebuild. We have Carson Wentz. We're a team that can win in a rebuild because of Carson Wentz. But don't get it twisted. We are in a rebuild. Giving up the King's ransom to the Browns is probably going to demand for a guy like Joe Thomas is going to be a horrendous value. We're not going to get very much return. Getting Joe Thomas, that's a, that's like a Patriots move. That is a win-now move to get Joe Thomas from the Cleveland Browns. We are not a team that is in a win-now mode. We are a team that is in a rebuild mode and giving up at the kind of assets, probably high draft picks, that are required to get Joe Thomas would be detrimental to this franchise. We need to continue to build around Carson Wentz with young players, especially young offensive linemen. We need corners. We need wide receivers. We need a lot of things. And a lot of those things aren't going to happen if we make a trade to get a giant cap sal- salary fucking cow in Joe Thomas on this roster. Another thing, he's a left tackle. He's not a right tackle. You know, they are somewhat fluid, but a left tackle is a left tackle and a right tackle is a right tackle. That's why Lane Johnson, this guy that everyone thinks is going to be our franchise left tackle, when he played left tackle last year when Jason Peters was hurt, he looked like shit. He was not a very good left tackle. I think Lane Johnson is a franchise right tackle. So... That being said, why would you bring in someone else to compete with Jason Peters? Jason Peters can't play on the right side. Jason Peters is a left tackle. Why would you want two left tackles? People are just assuming that because he's a tackle, he can be fluid. It's not the case with every single player. I'm not saying Joe Thomas can't play right tackle, but you are getting him to be your franchise left tackle. We already have that in Jason Peters. We already have an old left tackle in Jason Peters, if you will. Jason Peters is no longer could be considered the franchise left tackle. I think he's... Um, actually, with the way he's been playing this year, I would be uh, I'd be excited if he said he was staying another year, giving us one more season to kind of um, you know prepare for the loss of Jason Peters. But let's be let's be honest, he's probably not gonna come back next year. He's probably gonna retire, and uh, we'll have to look elsewhere. Probably the draft for our left tackle. But get rid of the Joe Thomas nonsense for right now. That is not going to happen. That is a bad move for the franchise. We do not need to act like a win-now franchise. We need to act like a franchise that's rebuilding that can also win the division, which is exactly what we are. Three and two. That's we're one. If we somehow upset the Vikings, no one gave us a chance to get the Steelers, and we won. If we can somehow upset the Vikings, uh, we're four and two. We're right back into the hunt. I mean, it's only a matter of time to the clock strikes midnight on the Dallas Cowboys, and they are going to absolutely shit the bed with the Tony Romo, Dak Prescott situation. Giants haven't been good. Redskins are hot and cold, so hopefully when they come to the link, we catch them on a cold streak and bring that back to 1-1 one and one on the year with the Redskins. But uh, that's what I think about the tackle spot. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If this is your first time stopping by. Please subscribe, smash that like button, all that good shit. And until next time, it's your boy C4, saying peace 
out.